make sure it works. At 7 o'clock, call to order the regular meeting here at the City Council of Rents Pass, 600 West Cleveland Boulevard on January 26, 2015 at 7 p.m. Everybody please rise from invocation, please. <coughs> Lord, I'd like to give thanks for this beautiful day. Also, uh, it's been a strong day for a bunch of families that, uh, that have lost loved ones over the past week, especially the Morales family that laid their mother to rest this, this today. I'd like to give thanks for the opportunity just to be here. Also, give us the wisdom to be able to acknowledge what we do is here for the betterment of Aransas Pass. With your blessings, would you please watch over us, guide us, guide our youth, our future of Aransas, guide all our people that work together to make this community so great, and take care of them and just guide us underneath your wings. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> this is going to bring us to item number three, the consent agenda. All of the following items of the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the City Council will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member so requests and if this, the, the discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. We have item A, the minutes of December 1st, and then December 15th and J January 5th of 2015. I make a motion that we accept uh, the consent agenda. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> this brings us to item number four. It's our citizen comments. Uh, please state your name, your address, and you have three minutes to state your business. The floor is now open to anybody who's willing. Yes, sir. If you mind, come up here to the mic, sir. I'm Dudley Ives. I live at 635 South Lamont here in Aransas. I moved here about two years ago. Yes, sir. The purpose of my uh, talking to you tonight is to try to get the city council to understand and know about a gentleman that's going around town and taking advantage of a lot of people like he's taking advantage of me. Uh, during the summer, I had a Mr. Lawrence Cruz uh, we signed a contract to build a garage for me, mm -hmm. a 20 by 20 garage, single car garage and a workshop with a 10 foot covered porch on it. And the contract price was $19,500. Uh, he put off, he would come maybe three days a week, which to begin with, that was fine. I told him he was trying to get started, he said, and he had been taken advantage of, according to him, by a lot of homeowners. Well, come to find out that may not be really true. Uh, he started out, he started digging the slab. It took him over a month to dig the slab which now I found out it should have taken about maybe a week at the most from start to finish and would have cost about $3,900 with concrete and everything. <coughs> I knew he was taking his time and, and milking it, but I put up with it. Right. It kept going. He got up the framing and then in November, he pulled his little uh, tantrum act, which he had done. This would have been the third time in November. They threw a tantrum and said he was leaving. Uh, and I said, okay, fine, leave and don't come back. So I started getting text messages and voicemails from him because I put his and his partner's name and number on my reject list. Mm -hmm. So all he could do was give me a text message or a voicemail. 
Well, I got all kinds of voicemails and text messages from him. He had reported me to the Border Patrol because I had hired illegal aliens. Uh, he described them in a different manner. Right. <clears throat> to come to my house and work, and he had, he was going to Texas Department of Insurance and Corpus and red flag my job, all kinds of things. There was a gentleman here that had been a, a framing contractor that had retired, Art Dougherty, and he had been helping Larry uh, lay out the rafters and everything. So, Mr. Ice, basically you have a complaint against somebody's poor craftsmanship and failure to do their job, right? Yeah. And, and did you do a file report, Mr. Mr. Blanchard? Okay. No, I mean, have you or? No. No, I put all. I haven't even gone to the police department yet. I think I probably have some criminal charges. I would say. Did you exchange money with them, or? Oh yes. Did you pay them up front, or? Yes. Basically. And by the week for the labor. And when it got over twenty-two thousand, that was it. Wow. Fair. Now I've had to spend money to try to keep it yes, going sir. and get it finished. Basically, you want to make the public aware of this situation, yes. with the gentleman. Yes. Yes. And his name is Lawrence Cruz? Lawrence Cruz. I, I just pulled him up on the database. He doesn't, he's not even a registered contractor in the city since 2012. And Mr. Ives, I will tell you, one of the first things in the residence is to verify that they are a registered contractor in the city and are even eligible to do work here. He doesn't have any insurance or permits, so the odds that you have a permit for the structure he's built for you is slim to none, which opens up an entirely different can of worms. So I would please ask you to visit with Mr. Brake before you leave today. Okay. okay. And supposedly I gave him $100 to get his contractor's uh, registration, not license. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's not Plus, he ended up with some more things that I'll discuss with the gentleman. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, I don't want to take we'll up take any care. more of your time. No, I appreciate you bringing this up. <coughs> and my neighbor was got involved with him too, and he was supposed to be here, but he uh, didn't show up. Well, I appreciate you at least taking the time to come up here and, uh, and address okay. this to us all. Thank you very Thank much. You, sir. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to make this call? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> Good evening, my name is Carrie Alarcon, and I am a local business owner here in Aransas Pass. Um, basically, I'm uh, addressing the council this evening um, to discuss a building that was located behind my um, establishment that I have moved forward um, in hopes to open a tax office for this tax season. I am currently have a stop notice on both buildings um, for work, um, and I'm trying to actually get information on what I need to do to move forward, um, hopefully in time to open for this season. Uh, Mayor and Council, I've already spoken to Carrie about her project. She has a storage building she's attempting to convert to an office space, which requires some building code items that need to be met. Um, she claims to be out of time for those permit items to be met. Her options are meet the building code or file an appeal submit your plans and you know because one of them is ambient air and accessibility options to the shed if you want to create an office space it has to be handicap accessible it has to have AC heating those kinds of things she has run out of time to do those things before tax season opens her method of appeal is to go to the building standards board and explain why she doesn't want or cannot meet the building code and then proceed through that she doesn't have time to do that either and so I don't have the mechanism to just wave away the building code. Okay. Does she have all the information for the building she, standards we, code? We spoke about what she needed to do. She had information about, um, she had come prior, spoken to the building official about the bathroom. There is a bathroom that's needed in the office space, but because it's close within 300 feet to the bar that's in front, they could share the restroom and that portion of the code could be waived there's still the ambient air temperature of the code that needs to be met as well as accessibility to and from the shed or the storage building. Which once, if you are allowed to do it, you can build a ramp yes. and make it accessible and stuff. But just, uh, what is the ambient? What is that? What is that? The code calls for the, the space to be heated and cooled to a certain consistent temperature. 
Okay, um, the building that, I'm, that I've moved is actually, it's been there for a very long time. Um, it's already been in office. It has drywall, um, wall paneling, and it has an AC unit in like a window one would. Um, the size of the building is I believe 16 by 10. Um, and I am, like I said, able to build the handicap ramp um, and come into compliance. Does that AC unit and the walls being, I mean it was, I believe the building was grandfathered. We're not restoring the building, just moving it. Um, and of course, eventually gonna build the, the ramp. Tax season doesn't end until the 15th. And um, the appeal process you said I need to go where? To the building standards board. Um, the, the issue with the building is, one, you have a stop work permit for doing work without a permit because the building was a storage building. It was not an office space. Now that it's being converted to an office space, there are certain criteria that have to be met that we discussed in the lobby. Right. Originally, it, though, ma'am, it was an office building. I just stored some items in it, not making it a storage unit, but somewhere I could store something when it wasn't in use of the office. So it was previously an office. Did it have a certificate of occupancy um, as that well? I, that I'm not sure because I just um, came over to, uh, in April of 14 is when I took over the location. Mm -hmm. It does not have a certificate of occupancy. It doesn't even have its own oh, address. That, to that's be correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's why I went and spoke mm -hmm. with the building inspector in August um, to let him know what my plans were for um, the beginning of January. And he did, he was uh, aware of the building that I was moving because he did come and do the actual occupancy inspection um, in April or before April. I'd have to look it up, but he did, and he's seen, um, he did tell me the only thing that I needed to do since it was a building being moved that was already on the property, just being moved forward, that I just needed to write a letter to myself, um, giving myself permission for my clients to use the restroom inside the other and, facility. And that's, that's one component of the code, and we talked about, mm -hmm. and, and you did electrical work, and that's where some of the stop payment, some of the stop work orders is because there's work going on without a permit. Yes, so that, to correct that, do I just need to go in and pay the permit, and I can, well, we can yeah, start there, there's again? a little bit more than converting that space that's going to be required, as we spoke about in the lobby. You're, you're going to have to apply for a permit and apply for the things that are required, and then if it doesn't meet the code, you have an avenue for an appeal through the Building Standards Board. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, say anything to address the council? The floor, the floor is open. Just want to make sure everybody hears me. <coughs> and if not, that'll be the end of our citizen comments and we'll continue on. <coughs> <coughs> this is going to bring us to item number five consider an act on election items which a will be a city of rents pass Texas general election order of election for municipalities la ciudad de aranzas pass Texas elección general or orden de la elección para municipales and then be item B, the resolution of 2015-750, resolution of the city of Ranzas Pass, Texas, providing the date and time of the 2015 general election to be con conducted by the San Patricia County Election Administration Office for early votes cast on direct recording electronic voting system and by paper ballot providing place precinct numbers where the election is to be held, providing the rate of pay per hour and the judges and the clerks and providing date and time of early voting. Which uh, resolution is now 2015-70, sin relación de la ciudad de Aranzas Paz, Texas, suministrado la fecha y la hora de la elección de general 2015 de la ciudad para su realizar por la oficina de ministrón de elección de cuando de San Patricio para la alianza de los votos tempranos y la, la cuenta del registrador uh, directo electrónico se suministro de voto y por la bolota de papel suministrado la, la cor y número y de recinto donde la elección de se ten, de va a tener tenido suministrado y la se puede por hora para jueves los, para los jueces y los recintos de suministrado la fecha y la hora de votación temprana. Uh, okay. And then there'll be item C, <laughs> contract with San Patricio <laughs> County of Election Services, el contrato con el condado de San Patricio para los servicios de elección. Thank you. <coughs> so, 
standard uh, standard resolution calling for the, the upcoming election. All right. So hopefully everybody understood that. We don't do no French here. <laughs> I am so glad that you could read that, too, because <laughs> I put that together. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Thank goodness for English to Spanish. <laughs> Well, I give thanks to my grandparents that raised me because that's the only way we're able to communicate. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, how are we going to do these ABC individually or all Probably at once? Just all at you once. can do it all, all at once. once. All at once? Sounds good? Mm -hmm. So now I hear a motion for approval for items A, B, and C. Well, I make a motion that we <coughs> approve the uh, items A, B, and C that are had to do with the elections taking place. I second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Did I have to say that in Spanish too? No. <laughs> <laughs> you got Philip. <laughs> this brings us to item six. Consider adoption of the anti NIMBYism. NIMBYism action plan <laughs> as described in the city's fair housing activity statement. It's at uh, Marion Council. This is a, a housekeeping item. It basically says we're going to meet all the federal regulations when we apply for grants and, and other federal and state assistance. And, and NIMBY stands for Not in My Backyard, which is um, uh, veiled discrimination. So it's an anti discrimination. Well, I make a motion that we adopt the anti-NIMBYism action plan. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> this brings us to item number seven. Consider an act on the city manager's item, which will be A, Combron Harbor mm -hmm. estimate bulkhead anticipated uh, task and fees for not to exceed $34,550 submitted by RVE engineer. Be item B, Compron Harbor estimated utility condition anticipated task and fees not to exceed $30,683 submitted by RBE Engineering. Item C will be awarded for concrete bulkhead repair Compron Harbor construction contract with Derrick Construction Company Incorporated. Item D will be a final change order for the Veterans Memorial Park submitted by Sean Miller. Item E will be aquatic center repairs not to exceed $120,000. Item F will be concealing the, the canceling. canceling, my bad, I apologize. <laughs> canceling the request for proposals of the aquatic center management system services. Item G will be purchase of new jetter truck for the Rams Pass <laughs> Utility Department, which I know we need. Mm -hmm. Item H will be general services contract with the RVE engineering. Sorry. Well, um, 7A, 7B, um, Palm Brown Harbor assessment costs, is, um, it, it continues on the utility condition and the bulkhead uh, inspection. We did have an underwater inspection recently, and this is um, further inspection of the bulkhead to get a good idea on condition and then utility conditions. But, Pat, I think, is there an amendment to this one on, no, never mind, different item. Um, so these tasks are not to uh, exceed the 70, 73233 um, component, and this is paid out of uh, bond 2014, the section that was allocated to Conrad Harbor. And this is the entire bulkhead or just a section of it? All of it. All of it? All of it. Okay. This is the, the project that's supposed to take about four months. Okay. Completion. And this is just more inspections of that? Or more in-depth? More in-depth. Yeah. We can vote on that as we go along, or do you want to just do them all? I think we just vote on I think you should do them individually. Individually? Yeah. So I hear a motion for approval for item A. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the task <coughs> and, and fees not to exceed 34550 as submitted by RBE Engineering. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 And item B is the utility condition. It's basically um, uh, obviously checking the condition of the water, sewer, and lift stations. Does that include electrical? 
or no? No. Or no. Okay. Well, I make a motion that we uh, approve the, uh, the utility condition task and fees not to exceed 38683 as submitted by RV Engineering. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, well, item 7C is the whole purpose for moving the meeting today to the 26th. Um, we did have bids for concrete bulkhead repair. This is the section of bulkhead that is in front of the dry stack and the uh, restaurant. Uh, unfortunately, we had two bidders, Dairy Construction and Russell Marine, both of which uh, came in above what the city had originally allocated. Uh, the construction, the total budget came in a little under $60,000 on top of what the city had already um, uh, projected for repair, and that is because prior um, prior projects have really lost their shirt when it comes to doing uh, the removal of the debris because there is just such an unknown of what's down there. But uh, the fact is, if we don't if we don't uh, commit, number one, we lose the grant, and then two, we're in violation of our lease with right. the lessee on that property <coughs> because we committed to, to make the repairs. So the uh, staff's recommendation is to award the bid to Derrick Construction and then also add an additional um, $60,000 above the construction budget to complete the task, which makes the total work 329 uh, 122 or so. So the city's portion of that 329 is about $90,000. <coughs> Do I hear a motion for approval for item C? Well, I make a motion that we uh, award the bid for concrete bulkhead repair, Calm Brown Harbor Construction to Derrick Construction Company, Inc. for a, um, a total of 329,121. Mine is the 90000 that the city pays. Mm -hmm. okay. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. um, item 70, Veterans Memorial, uh, final change order not to exceed $15,000. We did have some concrete repair. There was uh, an error on my part in adding and subtracting. I do still owe the concrete repair 30 uh, $4,800. There is some electrical that has to be run in order to uplight the poles and uplight the monuments as well as some final concrete pads for the, the benches and that will complete the work to Veterans Memorial Phase 1. I do anticipate coming back to the council in the next few months with the bathroom design, whether we choose to go skid mounted or whether we choose a, a formal building uh, remains to be seen. So it's a total of? It's not to exceed 15000 I don't okay. have a formal bid on the electrical components okay. yet. I know I thought that was here. I have a question before. Any yes, um, uh, dates as far as when it's finally going to be completed? I've had a few residents come by and find The only thing we're waiting for is the monument. The monument. Okay. Okay. That's, uh, and we had an email to India today we were waiting on. Uh, the monument actually, believe it or not, is uh, granite is bought from up north, shipped overseas to be polished, and then shipped back. And it's cheaper than having our American stateside folks do it and, and ship it to us. That's how the monument company, Harrison Monument Company, does business. So that's the only thing we're waiting on is shipment of the monument to complete the park, the okay. setting, and complete the park. Okay, so before we open it up for anybody to use it, we're just waiting for that. It, we can't open it up for the kids to play. We could. There's a, a, a grading, okay. a, a final okay. tripping hazard grading okay. that, that needs to happen and um, need to complete the change order so he can do that and get rid of any okay. loose ends. And then other than that, we're ready to go. We can open it for the playground equipment. Okay. Portion. Until the official right. opening. Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion for approval for item D? Uh, I make a motion that we approve the change order uh, for Veterans Memorial Park not to exceed $15,000. Second. First, aye. 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 I abstain. Temple. Um, item 7E is um, actually, I wish I could tell you it was less than 120000 as stated in the item, but it's actually closer to $160,000. <coughs> 
basically this item is um, the aquatic center has had deferred maintenance in other words we haven't touched it in a very long while um, the cool decking needs to be replaced there are some leaks that have caused uh, the decks to shift um, this hundred and sixty thousand dollars would include a complete remodel of the bathrooms and the facility the interior facilities it would um, replace all of the cool decking and it would um, have a, a company come in and level out the um, the pools themselves. We are getting the leaks repaired as we speak. There's a company out, but uh, the damage has already been done with the underlying leak. So that estimate is $160,000. And uh, at this point, I would tell you that we would pull it from reserves. I think we're going to end the year ample enough to be able to absorb it, but I don't have an identified <coughs> funding source right now. Who's going to be doing the work, Sylvia? We would put it out. Well, we Eurotech, um, we've received bids from Eurotech <coughs> on the um, <coughs> improving the uh, the leveling. Okay. And the cool decking really only has, and, and the contractors, the <coughs> cool decking really only has one manufacturer that does that, and that's all of that, um, what looks like grip when you're walking right, and, right. and it keeps it cool. That's a bulk of the repairs. We, we allocated about $50,000 for the remodel of the bathrooms and that would go out for bid. We did uh, modify the pool hours uh, simply because we're, we're in the process of repairs and this needed to come to you, but we're, we're gonna do a very, very strong marketing push now that we have data from last year that, that our auditor put in the, the point of sale software. Um, complete with the mascot and, and, and a draw that's going to make the aquatic center a destination and, and a complete customer service revamp of the lifeguards and the training and all of that. But there is a substantial investment just to keep the facelift up of the pool to make it an attractive place to be. So. Is there any questions from the council? There are a motion for approval for item E. Will I make a motion that we approve the, uh, the repairs to the aquatic center not to exceed 160000 Is that what you want me to make? Yes. Okay. Not to exceed 160000 Second. Okay. All first, aye. 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 What brings to item F? Well, 7F, we did go out for RFP for um, privatization of the aquatic center. We did not receive any um, any good viable bids. The bids that we did receive called for the city to pay fees and things like that and also make substantial investments. So at this point, we're going to cancel um, or request to cancel the RFP. And um, again, there's some things I'm going to share with you at, at the latter part to, to give the Aquatic Center <coughs> one last push in order to try to turn that corner and start becoming profitable. I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where we're break even, but at least we're at the point of not hemorrhaging uh, as much. So you're a motion for canceling item F. Well, I make a motion that we cancel the request for RFP for the Aquatic Center Management System. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, item 7G is a new jetter. Um, we did allocate about $600,000 for equipment. This particular item was allocated at $55,000. I do not have a viable bid from any one of the equipment purchasing um, companies, so I would I would venture to tell you that I'm not ready for this item, and I would ask the council pass. pass. Okay. Now bring us to item H. General Services contract with RBE Engineering. Um, we have allocated 45000 or had allocated $45,000 to RBE, um, and that was task-specific general engineering and any items that uh, we need assistance with. We have a similar contract with LNV. Uh, RBE has expended its $45,000, and this item is an additional $45,000. This is a way to keep a handle on costs so we know where we're at and it's not just a, a blank check. And sure. so we're doing incremental funding. Very good. Do I hear a motion for approval for item H? I make a motion that we approve the general service contract with RBE Engineering not to exceed $45,000. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are passing on item eight. 
Well, that's going to bring us to item number nine, considering that on approving the proper disposal of old computers and office equipment. We've got a lot of it. <laughs> uh, Jeff, do you want me to go through the item? Jeff, step down. It, it really is a matter of cleaning up, um, doing some housekeeping, and uh, disposing of all of the old typewriters and computer equipment that basically has little to no salvage value. Um, we would put it out for bid to see if anybody, you know, wanted the equipment, but I don't really think the items have any salvageable value at this particular point in time. So if you don't mind, before we continue on, man, if you do me a favor, that gentleman that walked out, please send him an email or something, tell him thank you for being here this evening. I uh, do appreciate it. Okay, I do appreciate him being here. All right, sorry about that. No, no, that's okay. Uh, it's, it's allowing us to dispose of old equipment. Is there any equipment at the old uh, Public Works building? There's yeah. just left. The old Public Works building being the water tower is? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's typewriters and old printers and dot matrix printers. There's, there's. We got most of the computers out of the last time we went around. <laughs> We'll put it out for bid and see if anybody has any mm -hmm. any use for it. Who is the auction chairman? that we approve the disposal of old computer and office equipment. Second. All well, first say aye. 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 Who is the second? I'm sorry. Billy. Billy. Okay. Um, <laughs> item 10. I'm sorry. Bring us to item 10. Consider an act an award in the bid to demolish or acquire the building located on 360 North Commercial. Which um, I believe is by the Tucker Place, right? Yes, sir. This this is the building that's had the D on it for some time. We um, did have some offers to acquire the building. We put it out for bid for either demolition or acquisition. We received uh, a bid from Brewster Construction for $500 to demolish the garage and remove the building. Uh, the next uh, lowest next to that was $4,000, and that the other bids that came in were for complete demolition. So staff's recommending awarding to Brewster Construction who would remove the building and, and complete the demolition. Did he give a timetable? Yeah, I, I, I bet it's like two days probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure. By, yeah. by the time the sun goes down, he'll yeah. have that thing gone. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now come up, Mr. Torres, let me open the floor to you real quick. Right. Yeah. I remember about a year and a half, two years ago, originated with that complaint because I was complaining about it was across from the church from the Simile Right. The the garage had gone from Collapse, yes, sir. from until it's laying down. Will that be included in that? Yes sir. Yes sir. It's it the garage will. and the and Okay, that way yes, I can sir. report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you get a yes, rounding star. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir. Thank you. <laughs> So do I hear a motion for approval for item 10? Well, I make a motion that we award the bid to Brewster Construction for the removal and the demolition of the property located at 360 North Commercial. Just to clean it up. I second. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 This brings us to item number 11, consider and act on approving emergency purchase of equipment related to the city lift stations. Um, our, our lift stations are in, um, are, are in pretty disrepair. We are completing the SCADA system for the water side, and as we move on to the sewer side, it's obvious um, our pumps and things are out. Uh, there's, this particular pump has been out for a while, and it is uh, an emergency item to be repaired, and it's a little over $8,000. I would expect in this next fiscal, um, we have a new public works director. We're going to put together a plan on how to begin addressing all of our maintenance issues. 
and I'll introduce him here in just a second. So we have a question on yes, these pumps and stuff. Do we have actual alarms that <clears throat> go to a computer or is it just checked daily by Not employees? At today, no. The SCADA system that's being installed for the water, yes, will give emergency um, um, outlook to smartphones and, and um, iPads and things like that. The, the projection for our next operation is to move to the lift stations, but before we move to the lift station, each one of those lift stations has a lot of electrical right. component and things, and it, it's going to be an expensive proposition, but in the long term, we're better able to manage our assets without sending a crew and a truck and everything out to, to manually turn on a pump. Okay. Um, our plan is to have redundancy everywhere in, in all of our pumps and all of our right. stations. And this is, this is really just one of the issues that shines when you don't have a backup system and it goes down. Okay. So I hear, uh, uh, do I have a motion for approval for item number 11? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve uh, the purchase of equipment related to the city lift stations. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 This is bringing to item number 12, city manager updates. Sylvia, you're up. Um, well, I will introduce Fernando Quintanilla. Fernando, if you'll please stand up and address the council. This is our new public works director. He officially started today uh, moving into our area. Uh, his wife is a teacher in Sitton now. So, Fernando. Good evening, council members. I'm happy to say that I today was my first day. It was exciting. I'm excited to be here. I got a lot of great ideas. I've been working with Sylvia and some of the other team members and brainstorming already of what we're going to do to improve. I graduated in 2004 from Texas and Kingsville with an engineering degree. I've, in the past 10 years, I've been doing engineering work for TechStot, for the city, for a private firm, construction. So I have well-rounded uh, engineering uh, knowledge, and like I said, I'm excited to be here and ready to run and get this thing going. So I want to thank you. I'm uh, really excited to be part of the city of Aransas Pass. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome, Welcome to our visit. Um, well, that takes one of my hats off. But uh, <laughs> I, I will tell you, I wanted to make the council aware that uh, we did do a massive restructure of the Public Works Division um, because Fernando is going to be tasked with putting some of our comprehensive and our master plans together so that we've got a plan and an outlook on how we repair and, and put all of our systems together. Candy has been moved um, over operations at, a, at an assistant director level. Uh, James Hale has moved from streets over to the water division, and Sid uh, Villarreal has been placed over the streets division. And the foreman and the crew leaders have shifted a little bit. Um, Parks has been carved out completely out of public works, and we've created a division called Community Enrichment, which is going to encompass um, uh, the library, the civic center, the aquatic center, the senior center, and those things that are um, public service driven where we've got a media, we've got a presence, and that uh, those crews that are associated with the parks will still do the mowing and the right of way, but often we pull away a public, a public works person to go do an assembly at civic center, for example, or to come do a building maintenance item. And so they'll be isolated and independent of their own so that our water sewer crews are focusing on water sewer and street. Um, I've asked Sarah Lee to lead the Community Enrichment Division. Uh, Sarah Lee and I are still in discussion, but I think it's going to be a positive. Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be a positive outcome, and and really the Community Enrichment portion of it is is really the marketing and the branding and the face of this city. It is the, those places that our residents and our visitors want to hang out. So Sarah's um, perfect for that particular division. Um, we do have a Citizens Academy starting on February the tenth. Coupled with that is a town hall meeting that is scheduled for February the 3rd uh, at the Civic Center. It is an opportunity for us to bring to light everything that's happening right now and a chance for our residents to um, ask questions and be uh, engaged. I touched a little bit about uh, the Aquatic Center revamp. That $160,000 is uh, going to go a long way in making that place the place to be. We've received a little bit of a respite with Schlitterbahn not coming online as fast as we anticipated, and so this is really our last push to get it right. Um, the staff, you know, Brooke and Manny and Sarah and, and the folks have wonderful ideas on how to get us there using social media, and now that we have data, we actually have a place to run. The, the Texas A&M students also had done that report, so we're putting all of those pieces in, so I hope this is a very successful season for the Aquatic Center. 
have a question on that. Yes, yes. Uh, I can ask questions. Yes, uh, is there a, a schedule already in place to keep uh, the pool, you know, minor repairs to keep it from going? For a maintenance plan? You know, some kind of maintenance plan? We're, we're going to be working on that, and we're going to be coming to the MDD board as well for a, a, a maintenance plan. Uh, there is, you know, at a minimum, there's probably a hundred thousand dollar investment every year into maintenance that needs to be done. Manny's um, done an outstanding job trying to get our pumps and things situated, and and the, the aquatic center hasn't had anything touched to it in ten years. So things things are broken. And yes, we'll we'll have a a long term maintenance plan. Shorter term though, uh, we we've got to fix some of the super keep super our, keep series. a handle on it. Too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So um, and also. Under the preventive plan, we're going to better inform our employees of what to look for in case they hear something that's not quite running yes, right, too, so they can alert us. To yes, take care sir. Of it. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you for um, we do have uh, a potential offer to an aquatic center director as well. Um, Manny's in final negotiations for that, so we hope that person to start here very soon. The aquatic center hours. Um, okay, she came on board. The aquatic center hours typically start in March, and our real upswing doesn't happen until May. So we're going to take the March and the April time frame as opposed to opening. We're going to take that time to really customer service, train our lifeguards, get the facility up and running, and jam pack May through September so that we have um, good revenue receiving, but it's jam packed with activities from um, you know, movies to dive in nights to service member nights to mommy's day out to daddy's day out kind of thing. So we already have a full calendar packed. Manny, with the new person coming on board, she does realize, like all aspects of the city, we do yes. believe in accountability. Yes, sir. And actually, this was made today. Okay. Um, we do have a media spotlight. Channel 6 is going to um, do an in-depth story on Aransas Pass uh, at latter part of this week, early part of next week, that will run during Sweeps Week. Um, they're going to not only um, highlight the, the ship, the Aransas Queen, but also all of the surrounding growth, um, any potential plans for harbor reconstruction and um, um, housing growth uh, uh, population growth that's coming to Aransas Pass. So we will be on uh, probably two or three, four and five minute segments. So that's a very good media attention for Aransas Pass. And so they will be able to get correct the item of being the Aransas Pass ship and not the Port Aransas ship <laughs> that I've been hearing <laughs> at six o'clock this afternoon, which yes, I know sir. our newspaper well, gets it and, right. You know, channel, channel six gets it right. Channel three is not. We've been in communication with with Channel 3. You're right, actually, I was listening. To what yeah, was channel it, it's actually Channel 3. They've not done as good a job on their research as Channel 6. And just so everybody understands, the Pride of Texas ship is not docking in Aransas Pass. They've not approached the city at all. And as far as we've been able to determine, the ship does not even exist. So. Okay. It's a ghost ship. It is a ghost ship. Um, we do have some engineering updates. I had put it in your um, in your last email. The uh, the bid for twenty seven twenty five and Johnny is here. Uh, if you have any questions for Johnny on uh, either FM twenty seven twenty five or any of our other uh, <coughs> Highland projects, I, I have a question, Johnny. But when do you think that twenty seven twenty five will come to a completion? And that will help us with the, our water in that area, not only yes. for the for the humane society. No, no that's 1027 oh, The other one, 1069. 1069. When are we going to try completing that one? That's a that's a textile project. We were told they'll have a shovel in the ground in March. That's what we were okay. told. I just want to ask about that. So once they start, we get to follow alongside them. We can I, I have to bring an item to council. If uh, you you saw, um, I don't know if you saw the. Um, they gave us an extension on the grants because we didn't have enough connections. There's an item that if 
we're not able to to get that the city needs to still make that connection it's an important turn to our um, island project so we'll be bringing that to you either way that's plan within a year for that to be completed so the 27 25 September and this year right yes ma'am okay good deal <laughs> It's, it's going. You. I do want to make sure it's advertised out for bids already. Okay, okay. Uh, I, so. yeah. I know we have a deadline on that. Okay, so. uh, and I did want to bring the council up to date on the um, uh, uh, the uh, property that's being cleared on 35. We did come to a final agreement with the developer on water line extension, <coughs> and so um, now we're we're completing some final tasks and either working with the county or allowing a different type of subdivision. But uh, he was ready to write a check. So. Oh, wow. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no other questions for anybody? Have, we have uh, Chief Chief Blanchard's up. I have a quick question. Yes, on what's How is the word being uh, put out for the town hall meeting? Well, I want to make sure we have. We're going to start blasting it now after you guys are, are now aware <laughs> for the February 3rd. We'll, we'll blast it. Social media will put it all over town on the flyers. Door hangers. Is there a way you can put it like on the water bill? Uh, is it too late for the water bill? <laughs> I'm just thinking because, you know, I just want to make sure our residents know. Can you put, I, it, can I, you I put don't it on like the side in front of the Civic Center? Nope. 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 That's a, no, that's, that's a lot. But, that's a good heads and but we could, we could get a banner. We could Shoot get a, we could yeah, get yeah, a banner. I, I have a question, question about that sign. That yes, sign sir. was originally, you know, for heads and beds and this mm -hmm. and that. But wasn't the original sign damaged and then it was replaced by another sign? Yes, funds? but it was paid with hot funds. Okay, I'm that's, just asking. That's, mm -hmm. that's the issue. That's the reason why. The, okay. If the council chooses to reimburse the hot fund, which is maybe a discussion to be had here when the chamber item comes up, so. because so the, the city, um, we paid $55,000 from hot funds to pay for the sign, which is why the sign has limited uses. Had we paid it out of general fund, then it's a community sign and yeah, All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we've Eric. got now racial profiling. Council, we uh, just, it's a formality to present to you the report for racial profiling. We were audited again by the same auditor we've used the last couple of years. We've had no issues uh, in the area of racial profiling. This year we had no complaints on racial profiling. And uh, I'm not alarmed, nor is command staff at any of the members as far as citations and stops know what we've seen. Um, there's no questions, I'll go on to the next one. Uh, December stats, we did see an increase in calls during December. Uh, traffic stops are down a little bit. I'm not going to go over all the numbers uh, on that, but the highlights is, of course, we had that seven vehicle accident, which was in intoxication manslaughter charge was filed and we are also considering on the second child that was severely injured following another charge for an injury of a child we've not done so yet and that may go to grand jury for indictment um, it's, we had a bunch of charitable events the PD had stuck with the traditional in December but the city also got involved so we were very creative on some of the things that we did too so it was awesome very charitable December uh, a lot of involvement. My mom personally came out on a couple occasions and she was just blown away. It was a pleasure to meet her. So, um, we had that, of course, the barricaded subject was a call that we had. He had uh, threatened severe injury to a family member and barricaded himself. We got him out successfully. Holiday uh, fireworks. We started a new I initiative with the parks department formally. And uh, uh, we decided to go out and give out trash bags and kind of help educate the public that was participating in it. It was great. If they didn't want to haul the trash bags off, they were heavy duty. We told them to plop them on the ground, we'll pick them up. And that's what happened. Uh, I've received compliment from uh, at least two different people so far, one who cleans up out there regularly, that this is the cleanest they've ever seen the, that area left. So we're going to keep up with that agenda. I, I just want the council to know that was New Year's Eve when staff is still at, at 8.30, 9 o'clock at night while everybody's already getting started. Staff's still out there handing out trash bags. So uh, kudos to Manny and PD. Yeah, it was awesome. I love working New Year's Eve. <laughs> 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 still a kid at heart. 
Yeah, and fire, fire department. department. Too, yeah. Uh, the next report we have is an annual public safety report. This year, I'm also posting this as soon as I get them presented to y'all. It'll be published through our website as well. Um, we, I'm just going to go through it quickly. We did see a hike in uh, calls for service that includes PD, fire, EMS, everything, by 2,800 calls for service more this year as over last year. Wow. Uh, Fire and EMS alone had 3,088 of those, which is 242 more than uh, last year. Um, then I break down PD, I'm able to break down PD a little bit more for police events, 24,000 events, 18,000 of which were non-traffic related. Uh, 541 of those events turned into a, a criminal case that's real involved that CID had to work on. And if you look at that, uh, Basically, uh, detective in -house, of the in-house detectives, each of them received about 15 cases a month. Now, of those cases, it's not something you wrap up overnight. A lot of those carry on and can carry on for a few months of investigation. Uh, on average, an officer was needed 83 times a day to respond to a call. Now, that includes the backup numbers. So when an officer goes to like a disturbance and another one backs him up, that's two officers needed for that one event. Last year we were at 79, uh, an average of 79 a day. Uh, the average response time has dropped uh, from 3.7 to 3.4 seconds. Um, traffic events, we boosted that up over last year, 4,300. We had 5,500 uh, this year. Tickets 2,100 of that 2,500 were violations. Our top violations, again, speeding, no insurance, expired inspection, and then the whole list goes on there. Uh, actually, I think prohibited use of cell phone, city ordinance was on there too. Mm -hmm. uh, adult arrests, we're up on arrests. I told you that we're up 161. That's actually inaccurate because my last year report did not take into account the first two months that were still on the old record system. Uh, we actually were not up that many. I think we were up only 69, I think, on arrest. On juvenile, we were up five juvenile detentions. Um, go back to this over here. Code enforcement, uh, Brake was busy. He handled about 435 code enforcement events. Uh, of that, I highlighted that there were 67 junk vehicle cases worked where he issued a citation. Uh, I can tell you this fix-it ticket process uh, is tremendous in saving us time and resources. Uh, I think less than five is what the court reported to me that actually made it to court because the majority of people did not want to have to get to the point of making it. Uh, 45 other code enforcement violations. You have the UCR numbers right there, what we reported. Uh, as I was doing this report, I received the UCR uh, where we stand as far as 2013 with us and the rest of the nation. I haven't really been able to go over that very well. Some of our numbers are up, some of our numbers are uh, down. Our stolen property is up, but then if you look at our recovery, our recovery is up over 100%. The other thing that I think is helping with some of our successes with stolen property, <coughs> so you see the amounts, the amounts vary, but we actually have a good success rate at, at closure uh, is I think in part due to our bait property. We had uh, 27 bait events in 2014 where um, we were able to arrest the guy every time. Now that also stacks against, that looks negatively because it looks like we had a theft or a burglar or whatever, and the, lo the property lost counts against us, but it also counts against us as a recovery, so. Uh, drugs, you're gonna see uh, marijuana going down, but you're gonna see things like heroin and uh, the others going, methamphetamine going up. Don't let that confuse you, those numbers are big, but that North 11th Street drug bus that we had was huge and uh, it was huge in the coastal bend yes wow. so that was a, that was a big deal to get that guy off the street and most of those numbers come from that address wow. wow 
Yeah. We had 955 open records requests. <coughs> All were answered without having to send to an attorney general for an opinion. We're very transparent, so we don't have a problem sharing information. And you got the asset forfeitures, our, our federal forfeiture fund. We brought in 158,000 in seizures last year. We had a heavy expense year, too, 243,000. We use that for a lot of our updating, like the taser cameras and stuff like that. Some of those updates were included with the crime board. Uh, guardian tracking, web maintenance, fleet maintenance, purchase of fleet vehicles. And then the state four feature. Uh, training, 4,300 hours of training we had this last year. We also hosted 16 schools, and we were able to award participants of those schools up to 4,200 hours of training in that including our people and people from the outside areas that participated. There's some of the highlight classes. Uh, prime time uh, interview and interrogation brought in the most from around the state. Uh, website, we have over 100,000 newer visitors or more visitors this year on our website than last year. Uh, I think day, our busiest day, we had 5,100 people visit. So far this year, uh, this month, We've had more visitors this month than we've ever had in a month prior in January. So we get a lot of activity through Facebook. Uh, those reports are both listed there as well. People can view those reports in summary. And then, of course, Facebook, our heaviest day on Facebook was when the officer jumped into the harbor to save the dog. We had uh, that video was viewed in that one day over 74,700 times. Wow. I'm going to have to ask. Nationwide. We're going to have to ask. Somebody asked about a calendar of your officers. Just hey, you know what? I don't mind getting on a calendar. Swimsuit or something like that? No, no, no. no. Oh. Chief, we did sexual harassment training. Come on. I said swimsuit. I think I was saying it. But, no, Eric, I do appreciate it on Facebook. When you find items, you're trying to get their owners to come collect. And I think, That's I think a great today deal. we might have had our first person say, hey, I think you have my son's bike. That's good. So hopefully hopefully it works. But, yeah, follow us online. If you're not, we give out a lot of information, and we need your help often. So. It's a good deal. Thank you. What he didn't tell you is the police online activity has made national news twice this year, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. twice in 2014. Kudos. Well, Eric never gets off the computer. Good though. news, and it's good news. Which we need, so. Good job. All right, that wraps up uh, updates. Okay. This is going to bring us to item number 13. We're going to recess the open meeting and retire to executive session pursuant to Chapter 551 of our Texas Government Code. Item A of Section 551.072 is deliberations regarding real estate property, Combron Harbor with Mr. Hal Jones. Item B is Section 551.074 deliberations regarding personnel, which will be municipal court judge and associate judge. Right now the time is 7.56. Open meeting is closed, and we're going to retire to the second session.
Sometimes they are, we'll see them together when they're making a meeting for business. But when it's dealing with uh, events that they have,